good day and welcome to the second to last learning unit learning unit number nine we will be discussing what short-term scheduling is as well as its importance we will also look at scheduling of operations in an organization high and low volume scheduling constrained work centers as well as service scheduling let's jump straight into it in the previous learning unit we looked at aggregate planning which happens in the intermediate term we are now moving to planning that organizations engage in in the short term which in essence is what short-term scheduling is therefore when an organization undertakes scheduling, it establishes the number of resources that will be needed and the sequence in which they will be used. In a manufacturing environment, production must be scheduled. The scheduling department needs to develop schedules for the workforce, machinery to be used, the procurement function, maintenance of machinery and the demand for the product of the organization in a service environment such as a university schedules need to be prepared for lecturing staff lecture halls cleaning of facilities printing of study material availability of staff during registration periods student examinations and so forth in most cases, organizations that do short-term scheduling use powerful computer software for this task. Examples of such software are SAP, BAAN, and QMusic. There are a number of other software packages. Due to the capabilities of this software, the satisfaction of customers has become a lot easier for organizations to achieve. Due to the capabilities of this software, the satisfaction of customers has become a lot easier for organizations to achieve, and organizations that make use of the scheduling software have a competitive advantage over competitor organizations that do not. Proper scheduling is important for the following reasons. If scheduling is achieved more effectively, all scarce resources will be used more efficiently. Capacity will then increase more significantly for every rand invested. Lower costs will be the result. Faster delivery of customers' goods will take place because of the flexibility of the system and the capacity added. The results will be satisfied customers. Scheduling done correctly offers a competitive advantage for an organization because it makes deliveries dependable. Ensuring that the correct scheduling techniques are used is very important. The techniques employed depend on the number of orders placed, the type of business and the complexity of the products manufactured. The table provided here shows the scheduling criteria that the schedule should meet and the factors that need to be taken into consideration. Let's look at two, the first one being minimizing the time it takes to complete a job. To achieve this, the operations manager needs to consider the average time it takes to complete each job. The second criterion looks at maximizing the use of resources. With this, the operations manager looks to measure the percentage that the facility is used or actually used productively. It is quite clear that any scheduling approach should be simple, clear, easy to understand, 
easy to implement, flexible and realistic. Clearly, the objective of scheduling should be the optimization of the resources used to ensure that objectives of manufacturing are met. The way an organization does scheduling depends on the volume of the output of both goods and services of the organization. Therefore, scheduling in a job shop differs from scheduling done in a continuous manufacturing environment. The main types of scheduling we shall discuss are scheduling in a high volume system and scheduling in a low volume system. The main types of scheduling we shall discuss are scheduling in a high volume system and scheduling in a low volume system. We begin by discussing high volume scheduling. In high volume scheduling, decisions must be made regarding the correct workloads for machines and workers, as well as the sequence in which the jobs are done. In high volume systems, there is a high degree of standardization of the equipment and the jobs undertaken. An example is seen in the motor vehicle manufacturing industry, where a high degree of standardization exists. Some parts can fit any type of model. The main objective of scheduling in this type of environment is to ensure the smooth flow of products through the process. This will ensure the highest possible use of machines, people, and materials. Low volume system scheduling usually applies to a job shop type of operation. Here, products are made to order, so no planning or manufacturing will take place before a confirmed order has been placed with the manufacturer. So this basically means that work does not start until a customer has sent the order through. An example we can use is a shoe repair shop. The repairing of a 20 inch heel with damaged buckles will be different from the repair of a sneaker that needs stitching. The needs might differ in as far as processing requirements as well as the types of materials required for each job are concerned. It is quite clear why scheduling jobs in a job shop is very complex. In this type of environment, the following two very basic issues must be addressed. Number one being loading and number two being sequencing. Let us look at loading first. Loading is assigning particular jobs to particular machines and workers. Most organizations have different work centers where machines are grouped together. When loading takes place, the jobs are assigned to the correct work centers. If a particular machine in a particular work center can do only one particular job, loading does not present a real problem. The problem arises when one job can be done by more than one machine in different work centers. At this stage, an operations manager can assign jobs to different work centers. Management should always strive to minimize setup time and cost when assigning jobs to work centers and should strive to minimize the idle time of machines and work centers and the time it takes to complete a job. Whereas loading determines the workload of machines or work centers, sequencing determines the specific machines or work centers to be used. Sequencing determines the order in which machines will be used. For example, 
In the process of manufacturing a car, the operations manager needs to determine whether the windows are fitted first, then followed by the doors, or vice versa. Operations managers need to identify the constraints on any process or the things that will impact negatively on the throughput rate of the processes. The theory of constraints, or TOC, is basically the body of knowledge that deals with all issues that limit an organization's ability to meet its obligations. There are two types. The physical constraints, which could be looking at how many employees are available or if there are enough raw materials for the number of products the organization wants to produce. The non-physical deal more with the processes used in the organization or how motivated the employees are. Both constraints can happen at a work center and need to be dealt with. As bottlenecks in any type of operation are things that makes the process inefficient or ineffective. For example, Think of a situation where an organization manufactures shoes. In this factory, the process of making shoes is a four-step process. On each step, steps one and two have enough employees to complete their parts. But when the shoes get to step three, there is a standstill because two of the employees that are usually stationed there are off sick causing the process to halt. That is a bottleneck because the process of making shoes has slowed down and cannot be completed as efficient because of lack of capacity. The following are the various methodologies available to deal with bottlenecks. Number one. Capacity at the bottleneck constraints can be increased. To achieve this objective, capital investment is required and more labor needs to be employed. This solution requires a reasonable time span to implement fully. Number two, a bottleneck can be managed through the cross-training of employees to ensure that sufficient labor is available at the bottleneck operation. Number three, work normally scheduled for the bottleneck can be rerouted to similar operations or can be routed to subcontractors. Number four, non-value adding operations such as inspections and product tests must be situated before the bottleneck operation. This results in the rejection of products of inferior quality before these products are allowed into the bottleneck. Therefore, valuable time is not wasted on such products. Number five. Work should be scheduled in such a manner that the throughput rate matches the capacity available in the bottleneck operation. The result will be that less work is scheduled for non-bottleneck operations. The scheduling of services differs from the scheduling of the production of goods in the following ways. The main emphasis in manufacturing is the scheduling of materials, but in the services, it is the personnel who must be scheduled. There is hardly any inventory in a service environment. Services are highly labor intensive and therefore the starving levels might differ from time period to time period. As a result of the above, it is a constant battle to ensure that labor capacity meets customer demand. In most service industries, demand is managed by making use of an employment system. Because of this, 
it is always so difficult to ensure that labor capacity meets customer demand. Here is an activity that will exercise your brain a bit. If you are like me and you don't feel like going to exercise your body at the gym, then why not exercise your brain? Kindly attempt it. And that brings us to the end of the learning unit where we learned about short-term scheduling. I hope you got some insights and hope to see you again for the next and final learning unit of the module.